phenomenal. God is good all the time. Let us say a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, our personal Lord and our Savior, individually, Father, and collectively. We thank you, Father, for the power and the grace and the mercy of the Holy Spirit, Father, that is here with us, Father, as our comforter and as our all, Father. Thank you for that, Father. Father, we ask for the strength, Father, and we ask for the renewing of our mind, Father. And we ask that we meditate within you and meditate on you, Father. And we ask that we tarry not, and we ask, Father, that we be activated, and those cloven tongues of fire stay with us, Father, and we spread your word in a fruitful fashion that is causing multiplication, Father. Let us use social media, Father, as your outlet, as God's center, as God's account. God, because we are your servants, Father, and we serve you, God, and we acknowledge you as your nation, Father. For these and many of the blessings, we will continuously pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, our personal Lord and Savior, who died for our sins and rose. We believe these things within our heart that Jesus Christ is our personal Lord and Savior. We believe the Holy Spirit is here to give us countenance and endow us, God. We acknowledge you again, Father, for these and many other blessings we will continuously pray in Jesus' name. By way of the grace and mercy of the power of the Holy Spirit, God, we acknowledge you. Amen, amen, and amen. Every day is a blessed day to give God praise. No matter if the sun is shining, no matter if it is raining, no matter what's going on in your life. It is up to us as individuals to give God play, to praise. And it is up to us as a collective nation, as God's church, to give God praise, to be fruitful and to multiply the word of God. Now, in all in all, we must realize that God will send us through tests. God will send us through situations that will transform us. And it is up to the ones who go through these situations to spread that word. It is up to the ones that know that they are battle tested, that they are true survivors here on this earth and give God praise on this earth as it is done in heaven. An example is somebody who has been through a situation, an illness, and they have dealt with that illness for many years or they have dealt with that illness for a long time or they have dealt with that illness for a brief stint and it did a lot of damage to them but yet they held their faith they held their faith they held their belief they held on to the garment of jesus christ the nazarene just as veronica held on to the garment of Jesus Christ the Nazarene and she pulled something out of Jesus Christ the Nazarene and Jesus said somebody pulled something out of me and that was Veronica the lady with the blood infirmity and she's not the only one to pull something out of Jesus Christ to pull something out of the Holy Spirit to pull something out of God yes indeed we have people here on this earth right now with testimonies to the testament of God because they hold on to the garment of God. They have the breastplate of the Lord on and they cannot take it off even if they try to take it off. They are girded. They are girded with God's living word. They have the cloven tongue of fire and they can do nothing about it. They cannot refuse it because it is built in. God wrote that in them and they are survivors of those situations. And we should listen to the people who have gone through things in their life. It is cool. It is fun. And it is good to pass time. So we think on social media, listening to sensational posts, but we really should be listening to people who can connect to our own personal lives because we can learn something from that. Life is a continuing learning lesson. And we should use those opportunities as a lesson to learn from God. God only uses the battle tested. God will not use someone if they are not battle tested. The battle tested do not complain. 
they automatically respond to what God has sent them to. Some people have the luxury of being placed in a situation to where things are handed to them. They get the opportunity to be taught. They get the opportunity to go through lessons. And then there are some that God throws straight to the market, that God throws straight into the battlefield that God put straight into action, that God activate from ground zero, just as God has done with Jesus Christ the Nazarene. And there, there are some that accept it. And the ones that accept it, we should listen to them. And we should use that to motivate us because we all have some sort of battle. We all have been battle tested to some sort of degree. And yes, I love to say that no one's problems outweigh the next person's problems. No one's burden is heavier than the next person's burden. They are not. But let's be realistic. Some people go through situations that are traumatic and that we may never experience. And that's an opportunity for us to listen and to learn from that individual. Hold on to what God is giving you. Hold on to what God is teaching you in your current situations in your life, no matter who they are with. No matter what you are going through, you must learn how to wrestle with God, just how Martin Luther King wrestled with God, just how Mother Teresa wrestled with God, just how your local pastor wrestles with God, not against God, but with God to give you the message that you need to give you the inspiration that you need because we all seek inspiration. We all seek an affirmation. Just how I am speaking these words that are unscripted and they are coming from my spirit, which that spirit is God's spirit. I indulge you. I encourage you to speak what God has placed into your heart, because what God has placed into your heart, no one knows but you and God. And God wants you to spread that word, that message. Me telling you about my personal situation, my personal struggle will not help you. But me telling you that God has pulled me out of it. God has found a way for me to survive financial burden. God has found a way for me to get through situations of illness. God has found a way for me to get through all the burdens that I have gone through in my life and that I am currently now situated in. Today, in 2024, I know you understand what I'm saying because we all go through a struggle. We all go through a burden, but God only goes to the battle tested because the battle tested refuse to complain. The battle tested congress with God. The battle tested are clergymen to Jesus Christ, not to anyone on this earth. The battle tested are with the Holy Spirit in communion. That is what the battle tested do. The battle tested of God are locked on Jesus. The battle tested of God are stayed and renew their mind and are meditated in God, around God. Without God, they spew the word all across this world. They refuse to not give. They are giving. And then they receive the overflow. That blessing. They receive it. And it's up to us. Come on now. I know you understand what I'm saying. It is up to us to give God praise when we are going through pain. Someone could be telling you, that you have an illness and you may have a short time to live, but I dare you to say, hallelujah, praise God, you are using me, Father, because I am a living witness. The doctors told me my son has a certain amount of years and I gave God praise right then and there. And I'm still giving God praise right here and right now because my son has surpassed that and he's still going, hallelujah. How do you think that feels to know that there's a ticking time on you? No one can place the time on you. God has no time. God has no time. Time is God. God is all. 
So I am battle tested and I am telling you, yes, you are scarred. Yes, you have received lashes, but those lashes were lashes of love from God. Those lashes didn't come from the devil. The devil is dead. Spell it backwards. You have lived. Remember that Jesus rose and remember when Jesus was dead. He wasn't. He was asleep. And Jesus transitioned down into hell and tore up hell. He tore up the door frames. He tore up the frames. He tore down the pillars and he bound Satan. And then he arose. So let us understand Jesus only talks to the battle tested. Now, will you listen? Because we all are battle tested. But will you listen to what Jesus is telling you? Will you let Jesus heal those wounds? You must. Will you spread the word of God here on social media? Will you do what God is asking you to do? How could you not do what God is asking you to do? How could you not? How could you not do what God is asking of you? Did you fling those stars into space? Did, were you there when stars were formed and created were you there when love was shaped were you there when god gave his command to the faith were you there when god gave his command to motion then how can you not lean on god's understanding were you there when god formed blinking were you there when God formed feathers? Were you there when God decided to form you? Were you there? Then how can we not lean on God? How can we not spread the love of God across this social media platforms, across YouTube, across Meta, across X, across Threads, across whatever? How can we not spread the word of God? Did you know the Venus system in the human body can wrap around the globe three times, the veins in your body, three times, one human being, if it was laid out would around this entire globe three times, the Venus system, that is within your body. So you tell if we lay out your veins or my veins, it would wrap, my veins will wrap around this globe three times. Come on now. Come on. How can we not lean on the one that created all that? How can we lean? How can we not lean on that? How can we not lean on the one that created matter, which matter cannot be created or destroyed? God is battle tested. That is why God only operates through the battle tested because God is battle tested. Jesus is battle tested. The Holy Spirit is battle tested and we must understand we too shall be battle tested when Jesus stumbled and Jesus fell and we picked up the cross. Our ancestor picked up the cross from Jesus. That was us receiving our battle assignment from God. That was us as the human race receiving our cross. Yes. When Simon picked it up, that was you, me, everyone else in existence, picking up the cross, receiving our battle assignment. So we are battle tested. But are we walking with that battle? Or have we tossed that cross to the side? Or have you decided to pick up your cross and, and stay phenomenal? God is good all the time. Let us say a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, by way of the grace, the mercy, and the ever-loving power of the Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you, God, as our creator, for you are the uncreated one, Father, and you have given us the right, you have given us dominion, Father, not dominance, but yet you have given us dominion, Father. You have given us property and you have given us control, Father. You have given us free will, Father. We thank you for all these things you have allowed us to be taught by your son jesus christ the nazarene who has led us to you god and 
has asked us to go about and do greater works than what Jesus himself has done and his disciples, Father. We love you, Father, and we thank you, Father. And we say all this, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, by the way of the grace and the mercy and the ever-loving power of the Holy Spirit, God, acknowledging you. Amen, 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 and amen. As everyone is starting their weekend off, their holiday weekend here in the States, I wanna say God bless you. To the individuals all across the world, I want to say God bless you and God is with you. Every day is an opportunity for us to give God praise. Every day is an opportunity for us to renew our minds. Every day is an opportunity for us to meditate within God. Every day is an opportunity to pray and give God praise without ceasing in continuum. Yes, you can do it. You can be in a position to where you can give God praise in continuum, in constant motion, because that is what it is all about, is giving God praise, giving God the glory. Because when you are able to give God the glory, that means you have a story. It's hard to give God glory if you don't have a story. And God gives all of us a situation, and God gives all of us the opportunity to express ourselves. We have emotions. But God wants the ones who know how to stay focused. God desires those who have a linear focus on what it is that God has for you. God knows that this world is filled with all sorts of distractions because God created this world, God created every single thing. Remember, there is nothing that is new under the sun to God. There is nothing new to God. This world is filled with this, uh, many distractions. This universe as well is filled with distractions. If you would ask an astronaut, could they navigate space without any sort of instrumentation, without any sort of communication back to Earth. If their vessel was to be spun around in outer space, is there an up, is there a down, is there a left, is there a, a right, is there a north, is there a south, is there a west, is there an east? We have to understand that God created all these things and we weren't present. So God is battle tested. God is proven. God has gone through the proving. So we must also continue that proving ground. And we must show God that we are worthy to praise God. We must show God that. And when you are going through a situation when you are going through it, when you are going through that trouble, that burden, are you strong enough? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit and able to give God praise while you are going through a burden? Again, you must continue to give God praise when you go through that burden. Do not ignore the fact that God is right there inside of you. So when you are going through your burden, God is going through that burden with you. You are not going through that situation alone. God is with you. You are not going through that circumstance alone. God is with you. God is seeing exactly what you see through your eyes because God is looking through your eyes. God sees all. God is omnipresent. God is omnipotent. That is compound words. Omnipotent. Omni means encompassing all. Potent, powerful, strong. We must understand that. So God is omnipresent. God is encompassing everything. 
So God is encompassing and is present. That means God is everywhere at one time. One time. We cannot do that. But we can do that. And we tell each other, I'm there for you in spirit. So we must realize that we are omnipotent. We are omnipresent because God has given that to us. We must not shrink away from the blessings that God has given us. We must endure those blessings. It is part of that cross, but we want to shrink away from those blessings and not realize that we, as God's nation, as God's people, are omnipotent. Jesus, while he walked this earth in the human flesh, said that we have that power with inside of us. And Jesus gave us examples. Jesus was able to heal people and not even be there. Jesus' disciples were able to touch someone, bless someone, and they were able to go bless and heal the next. And how did those disciples bless the next person so that they can go about and bless someone else? They did it with the living word of God, simply using living words. We must understand how powerful the words we speak are. And this is why God uses the battle tested to heal. This is why God uses the battle tested to proclaim his victories when no one sees victory. This is why God will take the battle tested and place them in a situation where it is one versus 10,000. God will do that. I want you to think about your personal circumstances. Have you ever been in a situation to where your core values of who you truly are are being tested by some other individuals? They want you to group up and they want you to be part of them and their wrongdoing. Did you fall for it? Or did you stay strong and keep your moral and your integrity in place? Keep all your moral values and your integrity in place. Did you do that? Because if you were able to keep all your moral values and your integrity in place, that is you going through the battle and that is you passing the test. Did you give in to what they wanted? Because if you give in to what the next person desires and it is not what God has placed inside of your heart, you are failing. You should do what God has put inside of you. Just because this world is slapping you around does not mean you should get angry. That does not mean you should lose your spiritual discipline and go all worldly on people. Stay away from that. Because the battle tested know how to stick to the strategy. They know how to stick to the plan of God no matter who is hurling stones at them. Because they have a reference point of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, suffering, long suffering and dying on the cross. They have a reference point of Martin Luther King being martyred. They have reference points of Malcolm X who saw the vision. And once he began to see the vision, he too was snatched up and transcended to the next level. We look at Mother Teresa and all the things that she has done. We look at Harriet Tubman, all the things that she endured and went through and all of that was for the word of God to free God's people. Harriet Tubman was a version of Moses. She led the people out of the wilderness, God's nation out of the wilderness. 
into the land of freedom, into the land of freedmen. These are examples. In every country, there are examples of people in that society, in their country, that have been martyred, that have chosen to speak the word of God, not a religion, but the word of God, because God is a spirit. And for people who are Christian, for people who are Muslim, for people who are Hindu, Sikh, for people who practice no religion, for people who practice no spirituality at all, God is a spirit. God is more than a spirit. God is everything. For the scientists of the world who do not believe in God, God is matter. Because matter can neither be created nor can it be destroyed. It cannot. Energy. God is that. Because God created energy. God is all these things. To the ones who believe in angels and pray to the angels and pray to saints. God created those saints. God created those angels and God tasked those angels. So understand that you have more power than all of those creatures and creations that you pray to you do because you have a direct line of communication with God and the battle tested of God go out and proclaim that and say stop praying to angels what are you doing why are you wasting your time when the angel has an assignment that has been tasked by God why are you praying to dead people why 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 are you doing that when you have a direct line of communication with the living, which is God? The battle tested don't pray to angels. The battle tested don't worry about what an atheist has to say. The battle tested use their lives as an example to catapult God's will. That's what the battle tested do. The battle tested know that God's love will endure the test of time because God created time for all the historians of this world. God created time. And for all the people who love to dig up inside of the earth, all the archaeologists, of this world who raise up the dead unbearable I'm having a little bit of internet issues where I'm located but God knows what God is doing so I'm going to keep flowing I'm going to keep talking because the battle tested don't stop when there are little distractions or things trying to detour them from the assignment that God has placed on their heart in their heart that is what the battle tested of God do. The battle tested of God don't just go to the Bible. They go to God. They remember what Jesus said. In certain edifices across this world, it says on their altar, do this in remembrance of me. So when you do something, you must remember. And what does the word remember mean? put back together you put back together so you must put the word of God back together and hold it hold fast to the word of God and go out and be fruitful and multiply and the battle tested don't mind where they speak the word of God the battle tested could be on the corner the battle tested could be speaking the word of God in the market the battle tested do not have to be behind a pulpit. The battle tested don't mind going on social media and speaking out and speaking up and giving God praise and letting the world know that God is here and that God is taking over social media because that is what Jesus spoke was the word of God. Jesus didn't speak the word of Jesus. 
Jesus didn't speak the word of the Holy Spirit. Jesus spoke the word of God. Jesus was not a Christian. Jesus was not a Christian. And again, the, when Jesus was here, there were not Christians on this earth. We must understand that there were no Christians on this earth before Jesus. There were children of God. It was God's nation and the ones that were against God's nation. And to this day, there is God's nation and there is the ones that are against God's nation. Down with the walls of Jericho. Down goes the separation of God's nation. Down goes the borders that separate God's people. Down goes the language barriers that separates God's people. Up goes social media and God getting praise on social media. Because if thine be lifted up, I shall draw all men unto me. And we will use social media to praise God. I see a revolution. I see revolving going on. I see a revelation going on. I see an unraveling going on. I see an unveiling going on here on social media. I see young people praising God, teaching these older people what they missed. I see the word of God going through older people, educating these young people and teaching them outside of the church. And that is what God wants people to do is realize that you are the church. I am the church. We are the church. We are one race, God's race, the human race, and we cannot be stopped. We are to obliterate all evil. Spell evil backwards. You have the word live, live, but we serve a living God. God is I-N-G. We are I-N-G because we are living. We don't just live. No, we are living and we shall be fruitful and we shall go about and spread the word of God. Don't you realize you might have the power, you might have 100,000 followers across your social media platform. I don't have that, but you may, and you may say one post, you may speak one post of the word of God and it may reach 20,000 people. That is more people than what Jesus had in one setting and you know it. This is why Jesus said we shall go about and do greater works because one person, one I tell you, one can go about and make a post and it can reach a million people and those million people can be drawn.